The stage is set up. It's the World Blitz 2019. Firuja is playing Magnus Carlsen. The game starts off with the King's Pawn. E5. Knight out into the center, attacking the pawn. Defended. Juicer to B5, attacking the knight. This is the Royal Lopez. A6, simply kicking away the bishop. Then pawn to D6, trying to develop this bishop. This bishop will go from this way. Castle, bishop d7, c3, trying to get in d4. g6 to get the bishop out this way. d4, center for white, bishop g7, simply protect the pawn. h3, preventing any bishop here businesses. Knight f6, the bishop comes all the way back to protect the center. Castle, rook to e1, rook to e8. Opening is done. 10 moves in. We get the Royal Lopez. This is the Morphe defense. Very common position. White has all the space. Black is a bit cramped. White is gonna hop the knight here, maybe push the edge pawn and look to attack the black king. The game went on with knight to d2. Queen e7 trying to shuffle the pieces. Knight ready to f1, ready to go to g3. Queen f8 just connecting the rooks out. Knight hopped into g3, bishop h6. This is the plan behind queen f8, trying to trade the pieces. Whenever you are cramped up, you should try trading the minor pieces. That is what Magnus is trying. Obviously, Firuja is not dumb enough to take the juicer out. But instead, he says no. If you want, you got to pay a price. Give away your pricey juicer for my dumb knight. He said no, I'm just gonna shuffle. Bishop here, attacking this pawn by the knight and the bishop. Block it out with the knight. H4, the pawn protects the knight. You cannot take it. I take back, double attack and win. No trading for black. Rook to d8. Bishop e3. The slow and steady squeeze from the Firuja. Bishop back to g7. h5. The patience is done. Firuja is ready to open up the h file to attack. Black cannot afford to take the pawn because after takes, 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 the queen is ready to hunt it down. So instead, Magnus just waits. Puts the bishop back on h6. Queen to c1. Line up the battery. And now, after knight here, Firuja made first mistake of the game that is to take the knight the knight was attacking the bishop the best way was to simply say no but the problem with taking is he thought black would take back with the bishop but then came pawn takes opening up the f file rook to f1 preparing to fight on the f Take, take, the rook is ready. Queen goes away and simply take the g pawn and put the queen to d2. But the problem is this bishop is annoying, pinning this pawn. And after black takes, you cannot take this way, got to take this way. Black undoubled his pawns, your pawns are still doubled. The position is just tiny bit better for black, but still white is in the game. The king came to g7, rook on f3, ready to double the rooks on the f file. Rook f8, fight for the f, double it up, trade out the rookies, another rook trade. Queen c3, attacking this pawn, looking for a disco from this side, pawn push, save the pawn. Knight f1, rotating the knight, e5, trying to block out the queen, offer a pawn trade. Rook takes, king takes, and now after queen here, with the queen and bishop battery, looking dangerous, looking to go to f7 and g8. The best move was to go king here, check, walk check walk and this is just equal magnus blundered he put the queen to f6 and now the queen is overloaded protecting this pawn covering the mate after takes you cannot take the pawn because if you takes it's a mate in one so he has to take with the pawn and by this way double attack attack the b7 and firusha wins the pawn not only one pawn another check and another pawn and firusha is two pawns up trying to squeeze the magia out. But this position is not that simple with the bishop pair in Magnus' hand and Magnus being the endgame goat. It's not gonna be easy. Queen here, trading out the queens. Bishop f7, and now a very smart decision to remove the pony out. You might say, wait, bishop pair advantage. Why did Maggie give it away? The idea is opposite color bishops are extra drawish. So by removing the pony, Magnus increased his chances of defense. Pawn push, save the pawn. King came out. This is a boring end game. White is two pawns up. Winning is impossible, especially with Maggie on the other hand. Bishop f8, king trying to walk in, or kick away the juicer. a5, all the pawns are on the dark square. 
this bishop can never win this all the job needs to be done by this dummy come back king walks black has nothing to do left right left just wait watch the king and defend bishop here bishop here king is out trying to attack attack the pawn but the pawn is defended it's a waiting game king out trying to enter well you can enter i do not care where you're gonna go Pawn is defended. Pawn is defended. Pawn pushed. Making some progress. Or at least looks like it. Bishop here. Now a3. The bishop is in the center. The king came from all the way from g1 to f4. King in the center. Time to push the tiny pawns. Trade it out. This pawn is a pass pawn. The way to win is to distract the king or the bishop away from the defense of this or this. Maybe somehow trade this for one of these and then push them. Bishop here, push the pawn. Bishop there. And now, there's a tricky idea to go bishop here. This way, the king and the bishop are stuck. If the king moves, you win this pawn. If the bishop moves, you win that pawn. The nose started to get to Firuja. He did not find the crucial move bishop here, but instead went king here, trading away the b5 pawn for the e5 pawn. Not sure why it's wrong, but the fishy doesn't like it. Let the fish cook. King here, king here, trying to make way for the pawn and not let this king enter. Bishop a5, trying to go there, attack this pawn, get something going. But the end game is so tricky and 10 seconds on the cuckoo clock, what to do? Push the pawn, attack this pawn. You'd be surprised to know, pawn push is a mistake. He had to let that pawn die. Bishop here, attacking this pawn, king there, again after king here. The way was to take this pawn and sacrifice this because the king is far far away you can simply walk away the king and push the pawn away push 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 win but in this position he wanted to hold on to the pawn he made a mess push it and this is back to equality now the king is in time to come all the way back even though white is three big pawns up the king blocks both of them the bishop blocks the g and this is just a draw game continued with king here bishop here pawn push and a big plunder bishop here fishy says it's a forced checkmate in 18 firuja with two seconds on the clock sadly could not spot the mate in 16 his fingers were a bit too buttery. He slipped. The king fell off the board. He played king here. And the clock ticked and he lost on time. But who wins this? Even though time is gone. Can you say black wins this? Because black only has one juicer left. And this is where the drama begins. Magnus claims to the arbiter that he's supposed to win. And Firura says, no cheating. This is a draw. So after discussing with the chief chief arbiter, it turns out even though black has nothing but a juicer left, it's actually technically possible to checkmate this dummy. You would say how? One piece is not enough. Well, it is. The way is to put this king slowly towards the corner. Walk in the king. And when the king is in the corner, put the king here. And now you'd be like, wait, even now if you check, he's out. Well, this is where the bishop comes in. You put this bishop here. But wait, really? The bishop comes here and now the king is stuck. You take the pawn and this is a checkmate. But Firuja would never, never in a million years allow this. Nobody cares. As long as it's possible. It's a win for Magnus and he is not a cheater.